So it's been about a month since we've been using the iPhone 16 Pro Max and I've been using it as my daily driver and I wanna give you guys my thoughts and overall impressions of this phone and see if it's a phone that you should upgrade to because there's a lot of good that comes with this phone but there's a lot of other things that aren't really talked about that I do wanna to bring to light, especially the one superpower and the one feature which I think gets completely overlooked time and time again on the iPhone which I'll save for the end of the video but without further ado, let's talk about my long-term review using the 16 Pro Max, let's get into it. So let's talk about the design of the iPhone 16 Pro Max first, and more specifically the fact that we had an increase in actual screen size for the first time in years. And funny enough, the increased screen size is something that isn't really talked about too much because it isn't really that noticeable because of how the form factor has stayed relatively the same. Apple was able to shrink the bezels on the iPhone 16 Pro and Pro Max to make it seem like the iPhone didn't get that much bigger, if at all. Now it did technically get a little bit bigger compared to the 15 Pro Max of last year, but going from 6.7 to 6.9 inches is a nice bump in terms of screen size for the larger phone. But again, from a form factor standpoint, it doesn't feel that different. So that's either a good thing or a bad thing, depending on who you ask. Some people like to have it so it does feel different in the hand. So you do feel like you're getting a year over year, I guess, quote unquote improvement. But then other people like the fact that they were able to fit a larger screen without really messing with the size or weight of the last year's phone because again, these Pro Max phones are now getting bigger and bigger. Now I've noticed that we are now on the cusp for me personally of how these screens are in terms of size. I am now really straining and reaching with my thumb in order to reach the other end of the phone. Whereas before with the 6.7 inch, it wasn't really straining that much. So now it seems to be like for me personally, and I have pretty normal sized hands, but for me personally, that larger Pro Max size, which is the one that I've been going with ever since they introduced the Pro Max size, is starting to get on the cusp of almost too big for me. But that being said, in my opinion, this is the best display that you can get on any smartphone, especially at this size. You know, you're talking about a full 120 hertz ProMotion, which we did have last year, but it's still as fluid and as beautiful to use as it has been in years past. You get up to 2000 nits of brightness when it comes to peak brightness. You have a thousand nit brightness for everyday use and that's 1600 HDR peak brightness as well. And the one thing that's new about this display compared to last year is that now it can reduce all the way down to one nit, which again, in personal use is something that I actually really enjoy because in a personal use case, when it does come time for bedtime and we're putting our kids to sleep, and let's say I do wanna pull up my phone, the 15 Pro Max was a little too bright even in the darkest conditions because you would kind of turn off all the lights and then you would still have this blue light coming out of your phone when you were trying to put the kids to sleep. Now going down to one nit of brightness and then there's also a nice little white balance trick that you can play to get it even dimmer but going down to one nit of brightness out of the box does help with that specific situation which I personally enjoy. But then when it comes to the rest of the design of the iPhone itself, it is still that same nice titanium look. And I do like how Apple did switch to titanium now looking back at it, because it does make it a little bit lighter. The form factor is a little bit nicer to hold in the hand because you still have that industrial look that you had with the 14, 13, and 12, but you now have it a little bit more rounded so it's not digging into your actual hand. Again, it wasn't a huge issue, but it is nice that Apple has made it that much better to hold in the hand over time. So from a design standpoint and an actual screen quality standpoint, this is the best of the best that Apple has made. But I will say that this is the first year that I'm really contemplating leaving the Pro Max and going to the regular Pro version because now the Pro is 6.3 inches while the Pro Max is 6.9. And as I mentioned, there are some situations where I am straining to go one-handed with the larger Pro Max phone. And now it's a perfect segue into our sponsor of this video, Taurus, which will keep our phone protected with a case as well as some high quality screen protectors to make sure that display stays pristine. Taurus is known for creating affordable accessories that deliver serious functionality. And if you know anything about me, you know that I'm all about gear that does more than one thing. Their Ostan 360 spin case is a perfect example. It's not just a case, it's a protective cover, a 360 degree stand, and a ring grip all in one. Plus it has additional magnets to give you full MagSafe compatibility. With drop protection tested up to 12 feet, this case adds tons of value without breaking the bank, making it perfect whether you're at work, in the kitchen, or on the go. I've been using the Ostan 360 and it's an absolute game changer for video calls and watching content hands-free. It's super versatile and I can set it up at my desk, prop it up while cooking, and even use the ring grip for a more secure hold when I'm out and about. Taurus also has their Glasgow X screen protector, which is super affordable and easy to install with their simple snap and pull design, which I absolutely love. It gives full edge to edge protection, keeping your display clear and scratch free without sacrificing any touch sensitivity. If you're looking to add real value and protection to your brand new iPhone 16 with an accessory that doesn't skimp on quality or functionality, Taurus absolutely has you covered. They're even offering an exclusive discount to our viewers, so just click on the first link down below to check them out. A huge thank you to Taurus for partnering up with 9to5Mac, and now 
back to the 16 Pro Max and whether or not it's worth it for you. So now let's talk about performance and battery life, and more importantly, battery life, because I have been seeing some awesome battery life on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm getting like 10, almost 11 hours of screen on time on a heavy day use with my iPhone with the 16 Pro Max, and that just goes to show you to give kudos to Apple by making these chips as efficient as possible with the new A18 Pro. But again, if you're somebody that uses their phone and uses it intensely, then this is gonna be the best battery life on any iPhone, and they weren't kidding when they said that on the actual keynote. So keep that in mind that it is great for battery life, and even for myself, I'm not using it in the best conditions because I'm using the beta program, I'm on 18.1, I'm probably gonna install 18.2 beta when it comes out. So again, my battery life isn't at the forefront when installing these betas, and I have seen people get 12, 13 hours of screen on time when they are using the standard public version of iOS 18. And then technically we do support faster charging. It really wasn't touted throughout the keynotes and things like that, but it does support 25 watts of fast MagSafe wireless charging, although you do need a specific MagSafe puck directly from Apple in order to get that 25 watts. And then it also supports up to 45 watts of wired charging as long as you have the correct brick. So that is nice to have that you were able to not only get a long time of battery life throughout the day, but then also if you do need to charge up and charge up quickly, Apple is slowly climbing that actual wattage ladder, which is something that they've never really done. And I do want to quickly touch on performance, although there isn't much of a difference going from the A17 Pro to the A18 Pro. In my opinion, the chip upgrade really went to the A18 and the regular 16 and 16 Plus models. But year over year, from the 17 Pro to the 18 Pro, you're getting about a 15% increase overall in performance. And I've actually seen some tests online that it actually reduces that even to 7% in terms of CPU boost and performance. So... Again, whatever you could do on your 15 Pro Max, you're gonna be able to do on the 16 Pro Max and vice versa. There really isn't that much of a difference, so at the end of the day, it is technically their best chip ever and it's ready for Apple intelligence, which we're gonna avoid in this video since it's not technically out to the public yet, but we have been using it in the beta program, but do keep in mind that it isn't that much faster. So I'm not gonna upgrade from the 15 Pro Max to the 16 Pro Max just for purely speed reasons because at the end of the day, they're pretty much the same exact chip with a couple of little things that were added to the 16 Pro Max from a feature standpoint, which we're gonna to touch on right now. So now this section I do want to talk about is going to be the cameras and especially that camera control button which is something that Apple added to the entire lineup and one of the differentiators physically from the 15 Pro Max to the 16 Pro Max. So first let's talk about the cameras themselves. In a silo they're fantastic cameras, they're still the best video cameras that you can use on any mobile device, they take great pictures, they're well saturated, it definitely has a specific look that is to iOS and that is to Apple and to iPhone so if you enjoy that look it's gonna be there out of the box. But they also included these new styles and the ability to change tones before you actually take the image. I haven't really played with that too much, but I have seen people that do play with it and actually take advantage of it to get you the style and the look that you want out of every single picture. So if that's something that you use, leave a comment down below and explain why you use it, how you use it, and what it's been beneficial for you in terms of using that camera feature. But in terms of what features came to the iPhone camera, we do now get 4K 120 FPS video recording, which is something we didn't get before. Before, with the 15 Pro Max and older ones, we did get that slow-mo mode, which gave us 1080p at 120Hz, and then even 720p at 240fps, but now we're getting 4K 120fps, which does make slow-mo shots look way more cinematic and a lot nicer, if that's something you're going to be using your iPhone for long-term. So, as a video camera, as a main camera, which again, I'm somebody that uses their iPhone as their main camera, and I have since the iPhone 10. I think it's still a great camera and the best camera that's gonna be in your pocket at all times. But now let's talk about that camera control button because this is a little bit interesting and I have a love-hate relationship with this thing as of right now. So the way that I've been personally using this camera control button to give me a net positive value is that I use it just purely as my camera shortcut. Now yes, you could have used the same action button to shortcut to your camera before, but something about the placement in your pocket with the placement of the camera control button when you reach in there your thumb is just naturally on that camera control button, so pressing it to pull up the camera is something that has come very natural to me. But that is where it ends with me when it comes to using that camera control button. I've tried and tried to kind of use it in my workflow, I've tried to use the double tap feature, I've tried to kind of use it to scroll in between things, but at the end of the day, even though it is a great feat from a hardware perspective because you essentially are putting a trackpad on the side of your phone in a tiny form factor, from a use case scenario, it's not adding anything that the iPhone already couldn't do. The same menus that you're switching between using that camera control button, you can still use on the normal UI of the camera application to switch between those features. So I haven't really been using it in that light. If anything, I'm kind of half pressing to try to autofocus, even though it's not even a feature, I'm just doing that out of habit. So once that feature does come out, I can see myself using it. But the combination of the placement of the camera control button and then also just the overall redundancy of it in terms of features and use cases and functionality makes me not use it too much. I will say that I use it every day, but I use it to pull up the camera application as a shortcut option. And then after that, I'm using the regular on-screen controls to be able to take those images. 
Sometimes every now and then I'll just quickly snap a picture, but again, even that motion will make you kind of move your hand a little bit, causing some sort of shutter delay, which then makes it a little bit of a blurry image. So my overall experience with the camera control button is that it's fine. It is okay. I do wish I could map it to some other things. I wish there was more settings for it. But I am more excited for the half press for autofocus as well as visual intelligence to be released alongside 18.2 towards the end of the year, which will kind of bring the camera control button up to speed and give it a lot more use cases aside from being kind of like a redundant menu selector in my opinion. But let me know in the comment down below if you're using the camera control button, what do you use it for? Do you want to get a camera control button on your current iPhone if it doesn't have it? Let me know. I'm always curious to know how people are using it and how they're benefiting from it. But there is one new feature that, again, I've been using a lot lately, especially when I'm out and about and recording on the fly, and that's going to be the new audio mix feature. Apple did mention that this has a brand new studio mic array or studio level mic array on the iPhone 16 Pro Max. And Honestly, it is an amazing set of microphones and an audio mix feature, being able to edit it inside the videos application or inside the photos application to then be able to drown out a bunch of noise. Like for instance, I recently took a trip to review the Volkswagen ID Buzz and we were pretty much right next to the ocean, right next to the Golden Gate Bridge. It was extremely loud. And I'm gonna play a clip of before and after of what it sounds like not using audio mix and then isolating my voice and reducing all that surround sound. And again, I'm not using any specific microphone. I'm literally just talking into my iPhone. Here you go. Well, all right, everybody, we are here by the... Hello, everybody, we're here by the Golden Gate Bridge and we are driving to ID Buzz. Which you see right behind me. This is the Pro S Plus version, the rear wheel drive. Hopefully you can hear me behind all these crashing waves, but it's a beautiful day in San Francisco to see exactly what this thing is all about. We've driven it about 30 minutes and so far, so good. Let's keep it going. So as you heard right there, the audio mix feature, and in that situation, I think that's gonna be probably the highest level and the, the worst situation to be putting the audio mix feature in. But now basically what this means is that you do not need to have a dedicated microphone at all anymore because this microphone is more than good enough, especially if you put a little sock on it to be able to isolate the noise even that much better and give you that studio effect. The audio mix feature alongside those studio mics on the iPhone 16 Pro Max is an amazing thing to have. So now we literally have a studio in our pocket. So yes, this is Apple's latest and greatest, and it looks like they've iterated so much to the point where now they've, this is peak iPhone. And yes, we say that pretty much every single year, but I can't see them making the screen any bigger. I can't see them making the screen any nicer. The cameras looks like they have, the only thing they can do to the cameras is make them physically bigger to add some natural bokeh. But who's gonna wanna get an iPhone with an even bigger camera bump? I mean, I'm sure we'll see it eventually, but Again, for the most part, this is gonna be peak iPhone, everybody. This is as good as it's gonna get. Overall, I am enjoying this phone in a silo. It's a fantastic phone. It's just with everything else around it, and especially comparing it to last year's models, from an internal spec standpoint, there isn't that big of a difference. And again, I know we're in a situation now where you're not supposed to upgrade every single year. These upgrades are not coming for people that have been using the same phone for three, four, five, even six years. So that is what these upgrades are for. So in terms of who should upgrade to this phone, it really depends, right? If you have an iPhone 15 Pro Max, unless you really just wanna spend $1,200 on a brand new iPhone and you need the extra 0.2 inches of screen real estate, which you don't really need to upgrade from the 15 Pro Max at all, even the 14 Pro Max. For me, the biggest things about the newer iPhones is that A, yes, that it can support Apple intelligence, even though it's not a feature that's even out yet and we don't know how well it's gonna be working or, or what the use cases are gonna be, but it is nice to know that the 15 Pro Max will support Apple intelligence, and then also USB-C. USB-C on the iPhone has been an absolute game changer for me personally in my workflow when it comes to transferring data, moving data around, being able to connect different dongles and different devices and different accessories. So as long as my iPhone can support Apple intelligence and it has USB-C, the fast version of USB-C, then that's all I'm gonna need. So I could have easily stuck with my 15 Pro Max if I wasn't looking to review the 16 Pro Max. But again, if you're not using your iPhone as a camera to make money, then you don't really need to upgrade at all until unless you maybe have the iPhone 12 or iPhone 13 or your battery is completely shot. For instance, my brother just came from the iPhone 12 Pro Max to the 16 Pro Max and to him, that four year gap is an absolute game changer. But once I updated the 16 Pro Max and got all of my old stuff onto there, like my applications and my contacts and everything, it pretty much just felt like the same exact phone. And I'll leave it at that. But that'll do it everybody. If you did enjoy this video, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below. Thank you so much for Taurus for partnering up with 9 to 5 Mac on this video. Definitely check them out. Their screen protectors and their cases are great to protect your iPhone. And if you guys want to watch more videos like this one, definitely check one of these right here. And until next time, I'm Fernando, and I'm out of here, everybody. Peace.